All right, shalom everyone and welcome once again to Jaw Radio. This is Chaza Aliyahu and Jeremy will be reading for us as we are here with the family in South Africa with another Shabbat day teaching. And today we will be looking at religious, religious faith versus salvation faith. Religious faith or darkness versus salvation faith or light. And this um, teaching has had a double inspiration in that a few weeks ago, after having been in this country for some time, um, certain things just hit me about the people here. If you want to know Israelites, if you want to know people who are in the Bible, I don't know about anywhere else, anywhere else, this is where they are. If you want to see people who match up with the Bible, this is where they are and they don't even know it. It is those of us who have studied the Bible and are studying the Bible that will see their traits and will be able to identify it. Now, one of the most profound traits is their lack of faith, their lack of emona. And I spoke with one of them, and they say that their lack of faith is so renowned that even in Zimbabwe, neighboring Zimbabwe, the, Zimbabwean, the Zimbabweans always tell them about their lack of faith. And Zimbabwe is just a border away. So you know that something is wrong. And this reminds me of Deuteronomy 32, verse, um, of verse 18. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. And hast forgotten Alua that formed thee. And when Yahuwah saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. Children in whom is no faith. If you want to see them, it is here. And it got me more understanding of what Shaul was speaking about when he was speaking about faith and the law and everything that has to do with faith. And then something else um, inspired it. I was having a conversation with a sister and um, a sister was under a whole lot of attacks from the enemy and was thinking of giving up because her problem was illness and she wanted, at least others were prompting, prompting her to go to pharmacia. And I was there trying to encourage her to hold out, to believe in the Most High and to trust in the Most High. And so it brought me more into emona, into faith. Faith of people who are not yet in the way. Faith of people who have come in the way. Faith of people who are at a higher level in the way. It's just emona, emona, to show us the faith that is needed for salvation versus the faith, which is a typical faith, which is the religious faith. So we're going to begin looking at faith, looking at what we need to do and what we need to understand about faith, about emana, in order to get ourselves along the right path. Now, let me begin by saying that the word, when we are believers, the word must be obeyed both in its spiritual 
and physical manifestation. Physical manifestation are the words that are written in the book. But the spiritual manifestation is through the Ruach. Now the physical manifestation words written in the book is as a result of the spiritual manifestation in which the word tells us that the, the book was written by set-apart men who were inspired by the Ruach HaKadosh. So the Ruach HaKadosh inspired men to write the physical words in the book. Then when we read the words in the book, Many of us remain physical with the words that we receive from the book. But the words from the book are supposed to transform us, the physical man, into more spiritual men. That is how the Ruach takes the physical word and makes a change to our lives. So we have to obey the Ruach as the words are written there so that we can get the benefit of the spiritual words that are written in a physical book. The problem is, most believers do not take the time to ensure that they obey the physical words that are written in the book. And that is called religion. The Modern believer today, most of the modern believer came in this end time through social media. Many of us, we grew up in church, we grew up in false religion, then people posting on social media, Facebook, YouTube most of all, and on websites, post the word of truth, we see the word of truth, we read the word of truth, we believe the word of truth, and we start following the word of truth. But many of us do not allow those words to truly transform us so that the Ruach that speaks through those words can have its way in our lives and start to transform us from the old person into the new man that is needed to enter into salvation. So we will be on social media and we learn these things and we move from people to people, listen to people, from people to people, from, oh, you hear people say, oh, you, know, you ever watch this guy here, such and such, this guy called Kazakh, um, from Just a Word, That's listen, and you listen to him and you hear what he has to say, and then you move on to someone else and you move on, and you keep piling and piling on different knowledge. The Word has to have its way. The word has to change us. If the word does not change us, we are wasting our time in religion. So the word must be obeyed in both its spiritual and physical manifestation. Let's go to John 1, 1 to 5. John 1, 1 to 5. Read it, please. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Alua, and the Word was Alua. The same was in the beginning with Alua. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So the Word is alive. And it was through the Word that the Most High created the heavens and the earth. And it is through the Word we get the scriptures, the book that they call the Bible and the other Hebrew scriptures. Verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So the light shines in darkness. Remember, our topic is religious faith, versus, which is darkness, versus Salvation faith, which is light. So the light will shine in the darkness. The light will shine into the religious people and they will not be able to comprehend the light. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So now the word is physically manifested. Yes? 
So the spirit manifests in the flesh, and the flesh now will now speak, and when the flesh speaks, it will speak Ruach. Hamashiach said, the words that I speak, they are Ruach, and they are life. So he will now, the physical word, will now speak the Ruach, which is life, and they who take the Ruach and allow that Ruach to change them will be transported or transformed into beings of light. Continue. And we beheld his splendor, the splendor as of the only begotten of the Father, full of favor and truth. Full of favor and truth. We're going to look at this word further on, favor and truth as it relates to faith verse 15 john bear witness of him and cried saying this was he of whom i spake he that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me mm -hmm. and of his fullness have all we received and favor for favor mm -hmm. Notice the favor again. Favor for um, favor for favor. And this is why Shaul, was it? Um, Shaul says this. Um, no, it's in John 1, 17. Yes, in the very next verse. For the law was given by Moses, but favor and truth came by Yahushua HaMashiach. Favor and truth came by Hamashiach. But there is a ticket that we have to have to access this favor. The Christians will tell you, I am in um, Jesus' favor. You have to first, to, to be in the favor of this Messiah, you have to first know who this Messiah is. You have to know the true Messiah. And you have to be in Emonah, in faith. Because it is through faith that you receive this favor or grace. You cannot receive this favor unless you are in emunah, in faith. Shaul spoke so many times about the faith that is in Hamashiach, which we're going to look at some of them as well. So remember that favor and truth, because Hamashiach said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So favor and truth came through Hamashiach. All right. Now, what is that? Oh, it's recording. Yeah. So, we know that we are called to walk out the truth of Hamashiach. Now, in walking out Hamashiach, we cannot um, reject the law of the Most High. Because in Matthew 5, 17 to 18, Hamashiach said this. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So Hamashiach came to fulfill the law. So because he came to fulfill the law, to walk in his favor and his truth, we will have to walk out the law. But... Hamashiach came in the New Testament, the New Covenant, where it was promised in Jeremiah 31, from 31, that the law would be written in our hearts. Read Matthew 5, 18, please. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. But the law that we are going to be walking in is the spirit of the law. We just have to give a touch of this. I never planned to put it in, but I guess I have to put it in. Um, Jeremiah 31, verse 33. Go ahead. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Yasharel. After those days, saith Yahuwah, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their allure and they shall be my people 
This is a new covenant with the law being placed in our hearts. So we just want to put together the type of obedience that we need to show. The type, so then we will look at the type of faith that we need to show in order to walk out this obedience. So we have to, we must walk out the spirit of the law when we are following the Messiah. Now, without walking in the spiritual manifestation, which are the, which are the words of the physical manifestation, which is Yahusha, without walking in the spiritual manifestation, we are going to be blinded. We are going to be blinded. So those persons who are Old Testament only are going to be literally blinded, not knowing where they are going. Let's go to Galatians 5, 16 to 26. If we are not walking in the... Uh, this glare is giving me... Galatians 5. We are going to be blinded if we are not walking in the spiritual manifestation. Read, please. This I say then, walk in the Ruach. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now this, is, this verse is very profound. If you are not walking in the spirit, in the spiritual manifestation of the word, led by the Ruach, led by the word, then we will fulfill the lust of the flesh. It means... Without walking in the spiritual manifestation of the Ruach, we are going to be sinful. No two ways about it. We are going to be sinful. So when someone comes and tells you they are Old Testament only, that's a straight person there will fulfill the lust of the flesh. That person will not be able to overcome the lust of the flesh and so will always be in sin. Likewise, someone, a believer, who says they believe in Yahusha and are not walking, being led by the Ruach, that person will also not be able to overcome the lust of the flesh. Why? Verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the Ruach, and the Ruach against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So the flesh, our flesh will be battling against the Ruach. We'll be fighting against the Ruach to dismiss the Ruach from being in our temples, from controlling our bodies, from controlling our soul. So this battle will be going on. So if you are not led by the Ruach, then the flesh is going to overpower and you are going to walk sinful. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the Ruach, Ye are not under the law. So this is what's important. Being led of the Ruach. Being led of the Ruach means that you are being carried by a Ruach, by a spirit. It's not you deciding what you want to do. It's the Ruach. You being in one with the Ruach, as John 17 says that they all may be one, I in them and thou in me. So when he is in us, then he will lead us where he wants to take us. It is only then when we are leadable, when we don't know what's going to happen next. So when the Most High says something, gives instructions, gives corrections, gives anything, then we just allow ourselves like little lambs to the slaughter, like little children to be led by his rock. John 3, 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Ruach. So is everyone that is born of the Ruach. You will be here now, and the Ruach does say something, and you move. The Ruach does say something, and you don't question it. You go. That is the person who is not under the law. 
Now, if you are under the law, because the word tells us that the law shows us what sin is, it also tells us that the law was not made for a righteous man, but it was made for sinners and the unrighteous. So if we are not led off the Ruach, then it means we are going to be under the law and we are going to be under the works of the flesh, which are manifest. So if the Ruach is not able to lead us, then we are potential victims of all these things. Start at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, mm -hmm. envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Alua. So there is a very thin line there. It's either you're led by the Ruach, and you avoid these things, or if you are still me, I, my, if it's still me, 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 then you are going to be prone to all of these sins. You have to be nobody. You have to be nothing. You have to be humble. You have to be like a little, um, a little child who you can take and say, um, Sam, go over there and pick up that. Sam doesn't ask why. He just asks what? And you show it to him and he says, you say go for that. Huh? Yeah, but yeah, well, he shouldn't. He shouldn't. That which means corrections need to be made there. So the adult now would ask, so why do you want me to go over there? And he says, But I don't think I know about but 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 that is the person who will be potential victim for the works of the flesh. But those in the the, the fruit of the ruach, as we're gonna read now. Those in the fruit of the Ruach are those who have surrendered themselves, consider themselves to be servants, consider themselves to be nobodies, are willing to suffer afflictions, persecutions, abuse, everything. These people will be walking in verse 22 because they will strive to be like Hamashiach. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Ruach is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. All right, there is no law. So these people will be walking in pure righteousness. When you are walking in all nine fruit of the Ruach and everything is working like clockwork, then you are ready for the kingdom. Romans 8. Romans 8? Yes, from 6. Romans 8. If any man hath not the Ruach Mashiach, that sounds so. <laughs> Is it right? Romans 8. 6, yeah. For to be carnally minded is death. Yes. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Alua, for it is not subject to the law of Alua. Neither indeed can be. Mm -hmm. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please Alua. So that is it, the two states. If we are not walking in the spiritual manifestation of the Ruach, then we will be carnal. We will be carnally minded. We will be focused on our flesh, our concerns, our me, our my, our image, our, our looks, our whatever things that we are concerned with when you are in the flesh. And then it says you will be enmity against Alua because you cannot be subject to the law of Alua because the law is spiritual and I am carnal. So if I am carnal, I will not be able to walk out the spiritual law. So when I'm in the flesh, not walking out the 
spiritual manifestation we cannot please alone. Verse 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach. If so be that the Ruach of Elua dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Ruach of Hamashiach, he is none of his. He is none of his. So we are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach. If so be that the Ruach of Elua dwell dwells in us. So if we don't have the Ruach of Hamashiach, we are none of his, which is the same thing that we have been saying from the beginning, that you could be reading scriptures from now till 10 kazillion, kabillion years. If you are not walking in the spirit, which is the Ruach of Hamashiach in us, then we are simply in religion. Pharisees, him. We are wasting our time. And my, when, uh, in getting the understanding of this, my thoughts go to many of our brothers who are awakening, Hebrew Israelites, awakening in that movement. And the majority of that movement is this kind of pharisaical. Some of them don't believe in Amashiach, some of them believe in Amashiach, but it is just like a <clears throat> a statement that they believe in him but their works do not manifest him all right so the true believer in the end time will be walking in the word and in faith this is what we want to establish the word without faith is nothing. It's a waste of time. And when we speak about faith, we speak about madness. We speak about a person who just doesn't care about the average things that others care about. This person lives a carefree life with not much concerns because this person Puts everything in the Most High. Puts all of his or her trust in the Most High. And just lives to do what the Most High says to do. This is the person who will enter the kingdom. He will obey the word of the Most High. But he will also have the faith of the Most High's son. Let's begin. Revelation twenty two fourteen. A rock are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So those people who reject Hamashiach and they see Revelation 22, 14, if that was there alone, now they would believe, you know what? All I have to do is to do his commandments. See? Those who do his commandments will have right to the tree of life and I can enter in through the gates into the city. But Revelation 14, 22 goes and tells us the truth, the true saints of the Bible. Revelation 14, 12, I mean. Read it, please. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elua and the faith of Yahmashiach. So they keep obedience to the word of Elua, to the commandments of Yahuwah, but they also have the faith of his son. Now this faith of his son is no ordinary faith. No ordinary emunah. Because we know the emunah that the son had. He gave up his life to save people who he didn't even know. This is the type of faith. This is the mad faith that we need to have. So Hamashiach came and showed us how to be like him. How to follow him. The way to salvation. We also have to follow on his path. Here is what religion does. Most of us are not willing to even try to follow along this path. So we come with religion and everybody forms their own righteousness. Thinking that they are on the path to salvation. That's what we do. We set up our own little righteousness. Some of us will follow some of what Yahusha does and we feel good. Some of us will not even follow it. We will just mention his name, call his name, 
say we are believers in him. I believe in Yahusha, such and such. So we avoid this requirement of having his emunah, of having his faith. And because we are faithless, because we are lacking in faith, we are just in religion. Always keep saying it, religion. So these are people who, <coughs> it's the scriptures. We focus heavily on the scriptures. Very, very heavily on the scriptures. There is a thing that I saw in the vision of Paul. When Shaul, when Paul said, he went into the heavens and saw them, a man who was crowned higher than the others. And they said, who is this man? And they said, this is the man who had only one scripture. And what he did with the scripture was so great that the Most High has to set him above all as an example to people to see what he's talking about. We don't have to know the scriptures inside out and everything about the scriptures. It is what we do with the scripture. That is what is important. It is what we do with it. If we don't do anything with it and we know it, we don't have the emona to make changes in our lives because of it, then it's not going to profit us anything. Yes? I will tell you something, women, for all the women out there. You could not know any scripture, but you are in subjection. You're in a better position than many people. Because the requirement for a woman is to go back to Eve before she fell. If that woman is in total subjection, that woman is in a right standing, a right place. Because she would not be like the rebellious Eve. She would be like the righteous Eve. Eve. Anyway, that was just something that came to me. All right? So, let's look at the purpose of the scripture. We're going to go to 2 Timothy 3, verse 10 to 17. The scriptures do not save us. They do not, by itself, knowing the scriptures, by itself, cannot save us. It is able to save us, but by itself it cannot save us. 2 Timothy chapter 3, start at verse 10. It is able to save us, but by itself, just knowing the scriptures, cannot save us. It is what we do with the scriptures that's important. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, Purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all Yahuwah delivered me. So Shaul was a man who knew the, script, knew the scripture. He knew the scripture because he learned from Gamaliel, who was the greatest um, teacher of the scriptures at, at that time. So Shaul knew the scripture, but look what he had to go through. If it was the scripture alone that could, knowing the scripture alone that could save us, he wouldn't have to go through all of these things, all of these works. And in verse 12, he went and told us that this is not for him only, but everybody who is a believer who will live um, set apart. Verse 12. Yea, and all that will live holy in Hamashiach, Yahusha, shall suffer persecution. So that persecution is what? Trial of our faith. The scriptures need faith to perfect us. When we hear the scriptures, we have to mix it with faith. Or else we are in religion. We are wasting time. Read thir from 13, please. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Mm -hmm. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom 
thou hast learned them. So continue in the things which thou hast learned. So when the scripture teaches you, you have to walk in what the scriptures teach you. Simple. Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the set-apart scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in HaMashiach, Yahusha. All right, look at that verse carefully. From a child thou hast known the set-apart scriptures, which will make you wise. You didn't say that. Which are able to make thee wise. Which are able. Now, the meaning of able there is dunamai, to be able or possible. Be able, can do, cannot, could, may, might, be possible, be of power. So the scripture may make you wise. It is possible for the scripture to make you wise. It is able to make you wise. It could make you wise. It might make you wise. It is possible to make you wise. It, of the, it is of the power to make you wise. But the scripture itself does not make you wise. What do you need? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Hamashiach Yahusha. So without that faith, the scriptures are not able to make you wise. Thou hast known the set apart scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Hamashiach Yahusha. Faith, emunah, is absolutely essential with the scriptures. To make you wise. <clears throat> yeah. I know I have an example of this. Yes. This guy, he knows the scripture like, I don't know what to say. I know what you're talking. He knows <laughs> know the scripture so well. I don't see nobody here. Not the, actually, nobody can beat that guy with scripture and come on to scripture. He know it back and front. It, if you're, if you're reading it, you can just start speaking and finish the entire verse, chapter, everything out of his head. And he's so good with it, but there is no transfer, no transformation in, in his life. He's just the same, like a sinner out there, just a sinner. Mm. Just sin, sin every day. Yes. And he, can, and he know that scripture that well. Yes. <laughs> he can quote the Bible mm. day in, day out. He would spend the whole day just quoting scriptures to you. And when you look at it, it's exactly what he's saying, yes. word for word. Mm -hmm. But there is no transformation in his life. No emana, yeah. no faith in Yahusha. Yeah. And that is why you will see the Hebrew Israelites out there. They'll be mashing up people, wrecking people with scriptures. And then you hear them, they'll be so unrighteous. You say, but how they, why are they so proud? And then they, they know so much. They're boastful. You, I, I see them messing up people and then they're mocking. Yeah! And laughing on all of them. <laughs> and laughing, they're mocking because of the knowledge that they have. But uh, this, that, that is religious faith. The salvation faith is a humble faith that would not mock anyone, that will turn and humbly try to turn people around without even mocking them. Let's go back to all scripture. Uh, I mean, verse 15. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Hamashiach, Yahusha. All right, go to verse 16 now. All scripture is given by inspiration of Alua and is profitable. And is what? Profitable. Profitable. Profitable if you utilize it properly. Just like you can have a piece of land and you are given seeds, and you don't utilize that land, you plant the seed, nothing comes, or you have a very poor yield. You will have to know how to deal with the land properly in order to make those seeds come properly. 
So the scripture is given by the Most High. It is profitable for doctrine. Continue. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So this is it. Look at it. It is profitable for doctrine. For doctrine there means teaching. For reproof means, um, let me get reproof. Um, evidence, conviction. It is also there for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the word has to be able to transform us. It has to be able to change us, to be able to make a difference. Now, verse 17 says, That the man of Alua may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, these, the, the scripture has to be able to make changes to us so that we can be perfect. And we know Hamashiach told us that we must be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And so, by the changing us, the scriptures will change us to be truly furnished unto all good works. All right? So if we do not mix the scripture with faith, it will not profit us. Now, as believers, we are called to follow the way, to be followers of the way. Now, the way is a way of life. And Shaul told us what that way of life was in Acts 24, 14. You got it? But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the allure of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. So... The law and in the prophets, it tells us what the way is. The way is believing everything that is written in the book of the law and in the prophets. But Shaul also told us that we must be followers of Yahusha. So when you follow the way, you have to have faith. To follow the way. Luke 20 verse 21. And they asked him saying. Master. We know that thou sayest. And teachest rightly. Neither acceptest thou the person of any. But teachest the way of Alua truly. The way of Alua. So the way is a pathway. Because the meaning of the way. It comes from the Greek word hodos. Which means a road. By implication, a progress. The root, act, or distance. Figuratively, a mode or means. A journey, a highway. So the way is a way of life. And walking in a way of life, you have to know where you are. How you, no, not where you are going. How you are going down the road. And you are going to go down the road led by Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, which is received through faith. It is faith that must lead us down the road on the pathway, or else we will be misguided. All right. So, in the book of James, it tells us about faith without works, that it is actually dead. So if we believe in Yahusha, if we are to go along the path through faith, that faith has to have works with it. James 2, 14 to 26.
James 2, 14 to 26. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? Mm -hmm. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. All right, so that is why the faith now works with the commands of the Most High, with the word of the Most High. Here's how the scriptures work. We get the scriptures. We hear the scriptures. Through faith, we obey the scriptures. That is faith and works. And it will also, as a result, give us obedience and every other good thing about it. But just to say we believe. So Christians, for example, who reject the word, who reject the law, reject the commands, they are having faith that has no works because their faith is not being mixed with obedience to the word. It is this marriage of this obedience to the word mixed with faith that will make us perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Verse 18, continue. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one Alua, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So the devils believe that there is one Alua, they believe and tremble. But where is their works? Where is their obedience? So it's obedience that makes the difference. Obedience to the word. Thou believest there is one Alua, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So for people who are along the Christian mindset, the Christian belief, your faith does not have any works. Your faith does not bring you into obedience. It makes you no different from the devils. Continue. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? So the Most High gave Abraham an instruction and his faith made him willing to make the sacrifice. This crazy sacrifice. That's why I was saying at the beginning, the faith that we're talking about is crazy faith in which certain things will be asked of us to do and it will even sound strange to us and we will be willing to do it. This that was asked of Abraham was very strange, but he was willing to do it. Continue. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. Mm -hmm. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed Alua, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of Alua. Mm -hmm. Ye see then, how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Mm. Continue. Likewise also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the Ruach is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Is dead also. So that faith and the scriptures have to be together. Hebrews, for the, Yeah, go ahead. Hebrews 10, um, 13. 37, 38. Hebrews 10, 38. 37 to 38. Ah, I think I had this lined up for later. Go ahead. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. No, no, no. Read from verse 20, 36. 
For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of Alua, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Mm -hmm. The just shall live by Emunah. So without Emunah, we cannot be just. We're going to look at this a little bit, great, um, bit later as well in another context. Can so we, we'll, huh? Can we go to Romans 10, 9, 14 to 15? Romans 10. Because many times you read this, but later down there's some more context to understand verse 9. So let's start at 9 and then go to 14 and 15. Don't go there yet because I have a look at confess separately. I'm going to let a look at confess and go deeper into it. So that's a good one. Right, right, the rock is right in line. So I think soon we should go there. All right. All right. So, accepting the word without emona. So, this we have said that since we came here, we saw the people here a way, a huge lack of emona. And um, many of the people we have spoken the word to, and we see they hear the word. They believe the word, they agree on the word, but there is something that is missing, and that is the emona. Because there is no emona, then we see not many changes to many people. So the, this gave me more understanding now of the emphasis that we have to place on emona. That we have to do. It cannot be about the knowledge of the scriptures. I want us to get this. When we are out there teaching, it cannot be about knowledge of the scriptures. There has to be knowledge along with emona. Emona has to be emphasized, or else we will likely get nowhere. This is one of the reasons we're putting this teaching today for us as men here to get us in the perspective and the understanding of just what is being missing while we are here preaching and teaching. It is emona that is missing. Yeah. So the just shall live by his faith. <laughs> I'm okay, I was early with this one. Romans 1, 16 to 17. That's, that's the one that we read? No. Romans 1, 16 to 17. For I am not ashamed of the good news of Hamashiach, for it is the power of Elua unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of Elua revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So Shaul came and did a little thing on this one. He left out a word here. The just shall live by faith. But that's not what the original said because he was quoting Habakkuk 2 verse 4. Read it please. Habakkuk 2 verse 4. Shaul said, the just shall live by faith. But what did Habakkuk say? Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. So that just as how we as believers, we have to have the faith of Hamashiach, we are going to be judged by our faith. It says the just shall live by faith. Yeah? Not by faith only, but our faith. What type of faith did we have? How far did this faith put, push us? How much did it justify us? How much did it allow us to walk in obedience to the word of the Most High? The just shall live by faith. Mark 5.34 Mark 5.34 mm -hmm. 
And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Mm -hmm. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Thy faith has made thee whole. Yeah. You have anything to say on it, Amagai? Hmm? Yeah, thy faith hath made thee whole. So this righteousness that comes through faith, the just shall live by faith, means the righteous shall live by his faith. This righteousness, um, this faith that comes through righteousness was manifested from way in the Old Testament. It is nothing new. Hebrews 11 verse 4 and 7. Hebrews 11, verse 4 and 7. By faith, Abel offered unto Alua a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, Alua testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. All right. True faith, Abel offered an excellent sacrifice, more excellent than Cain's. Through the sacrifice, through the sacrifice, through faith, he obtained witness that he was righteous. It is because of the fact that he offered a better sacrifice than Cain that he was made righteous. Let's go there. It's in the book of Habereshit, Genesis, I think it's Genesis 4. Yes. Verse 3. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Yahuwah. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahuwah had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. All right, so because of this faith offering of Abel, and when it says by faith, Abel brought of his best. Obviously, Cain did not bring of his best. Through faith, you will bring of the best of everything. That is why the Most High told Israel, Always to bring the best of your sheep. Do not bring anything with blemish. When you bring off your best, it is emona. It is belief in the Most High that I am giving you my best, but I know that you are going to give me better. That is faith. So Cain did not bring off his best. Likewise, we, when we are giving anything, we have to give of our best and not give anything less because that is what pleases the Most High. So, the Most High testified of Abel's gifts that it was through faith by accepting it, and Abel was righteous more than Cain. Now verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned of a lure, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark, to the saving of his house, mm -hmm. by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. All right. So the Most High warned Noah. And because he had faith, he moved with, with fear and prepared the ark. You see, faith always moves you to do something. Always moves you to do something. We cannot say we have faith and just sit and say we believe. That is that, that's just it. We have to do something. And that something is usually something crazy. Look at Noah. No rain. And then to build a boat, an ark. The people were there mocking him, laughing at him. Yes? But by faith he believed in the Most High. Look at Jeremiah. He bore a yoke over his shoulder. The people were laughing. No doubt. But he did it. 
the world says Jer Isaiah walked naked. Can you imagine what the people are saying? You're, you're, he's a madman. Ha 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 ha. And laughing at him. Huh? Not just for one day. So, sometimes our faith has to move us beyond our comfort zone. Yeah? Look at Abraham. Read 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. Abraham was a rich man. He never had to go. But through faith, he obeyed the Most High, and he went. Yeah? We see, we see um, when Yahusha was healing, Yes. It, he always said, by thy faith. Yes. Because of your faith. Yes. Matthew 20, Matthew 9. Yes. Verse 29. 29. Mm -hmm. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to Matthew 15. 1528 Then Yahushua answered and said unto her O woman great is thy faith be it unto thee even as thou wilt and her daughter was made whole from that very hour great is thy faith and there are a lot others Time, I don't yeah. Know, I won't say that verse. So. Yeah. Met it. I let this be the last one because there are many, many. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's too long. I've got many. I have so much things. But eight twenty. Eight eight. Twenty twenty six of that one. And the eight twenty six and. Hold on. Oh, Continue. Ver, leave from, from verse 8 to 10. The centurion answered and said, Master, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Mm. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Yahushua heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Yasharel. You can go to um, 26, and you see where... Um the disciples, the disciples didn't have much faith. And Yahusha get up and said, because of your yeah, lack of faith. So no, 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 I'm going to look. I'm going to look at that. It, the opposite of it. <laughs> I'm going to look at that one as well. There. Um, yeah, let me see if this is it. Romans, Romans 4. Romans 4. What's the topic again? Righteousness through faith. Let me see if the Romans four. I have that one. I have that one lined up. Lined up. Um, okay. I think I. I don't know what I. It is there to explain what is there. Yeah. Romans four, start from verse one to twelve. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to splendor, but not before Elua. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed Elua, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of favor, but of debt. All right, so Shaul was explaining Abraham's righteousness through Emunah. So it was James who went on, and we read James earlier, to explain that the, it's not faith only, but Shaul was emphasizing faith. 
So he says, believed Alua, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. But James went on to say, his belief led him to do things to complete the package, which is the same thing that we believe in. Continue. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the unholy, his faith is counted for righteousness. So what Shaul was speaking about is works of the law. Working, meaning you are going to the law, looking at the things that are in the law, and then obeying them and justifying yourselves and said, okay, I obey that Torah. That's what he's talking about. What he's talking about is believing in Hamashiach without even having to justify yourself by the law. Verse 6. Even as David also describeth the barakness of the man, unto whom Alua imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Barak are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. All right. So let's go back, go now to, where are we going next? We're going to Yasharal's unbelief. The result of seeking righteousness without faith. The experience of Yasharal. This is what happens when we seek righteousness without faith. When we are on social media, Seeking righteousness, seeking to understand this and understand that, asking questions, asking this and asking that, moving from teacher to teacher, from place to place, without actually taking the time for the word to have effect on us and to get us to actually do things, this is what happens to us. Romans 9, 30 to 33. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? What about Yasharal? But Yasharal, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. So the difference with the Gentiles, the Gentiles are following Yahusha Hamashiach. Yasharal, that is following after the law and not following Yahusha Hamashiach, they have not attained to the law that they are following. That's what he's saying. And he's going to tell us why. Verse 32. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. Say that again. Because, because they, they sought, sought it not, not by faith. faith. Say it again. Because they sought it not by faith. Uh huh. But as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. This is very important for us to understand. Yahusha Hamashiach is the stumbling stone. Now, trying to obey the law without Yahusha Hamashiach is trying to obey the law without faith. Is seeking the law, but not by faith, but by the works of the law. This is what we're telling people that it is the Hebrew Israelite movement. It is a dangerous movement. We love our brothers and everything, but it is dangerous because they have so much knowledge. And even when they are wrong, they bring up so much precepts, you will believe that their wrong is right. But they are not seeking righteousness through Emunah. Every time I hear them talk, they take a, talk about going back to the commandments, going back to the law. And every time they are arguing, and arguing about the law. Hardly hear them arguing about Yahusha. It might only be um, Old Testament only people and they are fighting. Hardly hear them arguing about the words of Yahusha. Nothing like that. So they are seeking the righteousness without uh, faith, without the, st the stumbling stone. Verse 33. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Yes. So that is the problem. The stumbling stone. 
Yahusha has become a stumbling stone to so many of us. How many people in the world are there chasing down Yahusha, chasing down, walking like Yahusha, walking out his righteousness? How many? Very few. So we get to, let me see how much time has gone. 110, good time. So we get to faithlessness. Believing on is very important. Believing on but not confessing Yahusha. We say we believe, but we do not confess him. This is the difference. We have to both believe and confess Yahusha. Acts 6 verse 17. Acts 6 verse 17. Acts 6 at 17? Where, where did I get that? Acts 6 17. I don't know where I got that from. Let me see Acts 6 7. No. I think, yeah, let's try 6 7. Um. Well, this year, the most I want is 6 7. And the word of Alua increased, and the number, number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. So the way was called the faith, which means that it required faith to follow this way. And a great company of the priests, those who followed the law, were obedient to the faith. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. There we go. I didn't even plan to go there, but this gives us another aspect of faith. Without faith, we cannot do great wonders and miracles among the people. Without faith, we will only have the word. We will not have the power to do Whatever will the Ruach wants us to do among the people. Acts, Acts 3.16. Let me see if the, what's there. Acts 3.16. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, thanks. Acts 3.16. And his name through faith. In his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. All right, so that's, 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 that's coming from the one that we just read about Stephen. It is the faith which is through Yahusha that gave this man perfect soundness. This was a healing that took place. It is his name, through faith in his name, that has made this man strong. So without the faith, we will not be able to do things in the supernatural realm. We will be only able to speak words. And we will be able to know words, but we will not be able to do things that the Most High wants us to do through the Ruach. John 12, 37 to 43. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, mm -hmm. that the saying of Esaias the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Master, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of Yahuwah been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Mm -hmm. These things said Isaiah when he saw his splendor and spake of him. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many, many believed, believed on him, him, 
But because of the Pharisees, they, they did, did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of Elua. Now we're going to look in the importance of confessing Yahusha and the difference with belief. So they believed on him. They believed that he was the son of Elua. But what? They did not confess him. It's the same thing I'm telling you about our brothers in many of the Hebrew Israelite camps. They say they believe on Yahusha, but they do not confess him. What does it mean to confess him? He says, lest they be, should be put out of the synagogue. So to confess Yahusha comes at a price. To confess Yahusha is through faith. Because you have to make a sacrifice. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of Alua. So the Most High praises us when we confess his son. But man does not praise us when we confess him. So what does the word confess mean? Meaning of confess. It is the Greek word homologio. To assent. That is covenant. Acknowledge. Confess. Profess. Confession is made. Well, give thanks and promise are two different things. So it says to assent. That is covenant. Acknowledge. So it is to acknowledge. His, so I can believe on him, but I do not acknowledge him. I tell you our brothers are preaching. We can be preaching. And we say we believe in him, but we do not acknowledge him by our behavior, by our works. That is why 1 John 2, 6 says, He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself so to walk even as he walked. In walking as he walked, that is how you confess him. Because you will profess him, you will confess him, you will acknowledge him. So as I said before, the Most High praises us when we confess his Son. We just saw it in John 12, 43. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of Allah. So that mean when, means when we confess the Son of the Most High, the Most High will give us, will praise, give praise unto us. Romans 2, 29 again, the Most High praises us when we confess his Son. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the Ruach, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of Alua. So the praise is of Alua because we, our circumcision is of the heart. We believe in Yahusha Hamashiach. We repented and we were immersed in his name for the remission of sins. And we received the gift of his Ruach. And so we confessed him and the, our praise comes from the Most High. The Most High praises us. But guess what? The other side of the coin we will be rejected when we are ashamed of his son. Matthew 10, 33, 32 to 33. We will be rejected when we are ashamed of his son. That is why we must have faith in his son. We must believe in his son at all, with all our power. Believe in his son. And so we will confess him. And so we will not be ashamed of him. And so we will not be rejected of the Father. Matthew 10, 32 to 33. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men. Shall do what? Confess me before men. Shall acknowledge me before men. Shall profess me before men. What will happen? Will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. So we have to, if we're not confessing him here, then he will not be confessing us before his father. Verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. That's why we have to keep acknowledging Yahusha Hamashiach. Another example, Mark 8, 38. Whosoever. 
Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the splendor of his Father with the set-apart angels. Now many believers are waiting. I watch a lot of videos on many believers are awaiting the return of the Messiah. The Messiah is telling us if we don't confess him now, in this adulterous and sinful generation, when he returns, he will be ashamed of us when he comes in the splendor of his Father. So we will be here waiting for his return, not knowing that upon his return, we will be rejected. So we have to confess, we have to acknowledge the Son of Man. Let me show you a way in which we show that we are ashamed of him. Very serious way. 2 Timothy 1 verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our master, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the good news according to the power of Alua. You see? We have to be partakers of the afflictions of the good news. The good news, the gospel, the word of truth, comes with afflictions. If we run from the afflictions, if we are ashamed of the afflictions, then we are ashamed of the testimony of our master. Why? Because we are called to follow our master, and this is the testimony that he left. He left a testimony of afflictions. And we as believers have to live out that, um, those afflictions in order to walk in his footsteps. Otherwise, we will show that we are ashamed of him. And remember what he said in the previous verse? If we do not confess him, if we are ashamed of him, he will deny us before the Father, and he will also deny us when he comes. All right? So, we are speaking of the religious again. It is very dangerous. This religious thing is very dangerous. All over the world, we avoid faith by setting up our own righteousness. We avoid dealing with faith because faith is not easy. You have to believe things that are going to be difficult for you, for the average person to do. It's going to take you out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to do things that um, you don't want to do. So what people do with religions 40,000 Christian denominations, what they do with religion, they set up, they avoid faith by setting up their own standards of righteousness. We keep saying this over and over again. Different Christian denominations, different beliefs, different this, different that. You have to do this, you don't have to do this. And in comes Hebrew Israelite movement, Christianity 2.0. This set of this camp, you do this, you don't do this. This camp, they don't believe in baptism. This camp, they might do baptism. Um, this one, baptizing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those camps say no baptism. This and that. That is one of the ways in which they are divided. So we avoid faith by setting up our own righteousness. Romans 10, verse 1 to 4. Brethren, my heart's desire... And prayer to Alua, for Yasharal is, that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Alua, but not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. For they being ignorant of Alua's righteousness, mm -hmm. and going about to establish their, their own, own righteousness, righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Alua. For Hamashiach is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. All right. So it's speaking about Yasharal. They have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. They being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness, which is through Yahusha Hamashiach, they have gone about to set up their own righteousness, 
and not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Alua, which is the true, the head cornerstone, Yahusha Hamashiach. Yahusha Hamashiach. So instead, they set up their own righteousness, their own standard of doing everything. For Hamashiach is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. Hamashiach is the point aimed at by the law to everyone that believes. So, in order to walk out the law, we have to walk in the similitude of Hamashiach. That's what he was saying there. Okay? Philippians 3 verse 1 to 16, setting up our own righteousness. Philippians 3, 1 to 16. Everybody does it in their own way. I'm going to tell you that a lot of us as believers, that is what we do. Philippians 3, 1 to 16. I have to be very cognizant that whenever a hard word comes, I have to challenge myself to stand up to this word or else the flesh in me would want to tell me, ah, no, do so and so, and try to find another way. It's very, very <coughs> hard to walk in the true righteousness of Alua unless you are totally, totally dedicated to the most high <coughs> righteousness. Read verse from verse, what did we say? Oh, 1 to 16, go ahead. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in Yahuwah to write the same things to you. T to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, for we are the circumcision, which worship Alua in the Ruach, and rejoice in Hamashiach, Yahusha, and have no confidence in the flesh. There we go. We said in the, initially we said you have to be walking in the Ruach. You have to be walking in the spiritual manifestation, not in the flesh. When you are walking in the flesh, then you are on your way to sin. Continue. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Yasharel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the assembly, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Hamashiach. All right, so notice he says, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But he's willing to count it loss for Hamashiach. That means Hamashiach is a far greater um, standard than the righteousness which is in the law. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Hamashiach, Yahusha, my master, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Hamashiach. So everything is set towards winning Hamashiach, willing to lose every single thing. All of those accolades, circumcised the eight day of the stock of Yahshua, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisees, concerning zeal, persecuting the assembly, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He was willing to count all of those foolishness and to throw them away to win Hamashiach. Verse 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Hamashiach, the righteousness which is of Alua by faith. That is what we are talking about. The scriptures without this faith is nothing. The faith of Hamashiach. Not having mine own righteousness. So in having his own righteousness now, it would be his um, being able to walk out the law blameless. But he is willing to throw away that righteousness 
to get the righteousness which is through Yahusha, which is through the faith, through believing in Hamashiach. And through believing in Hamashiach, he told us in another, another place, it is believing in him and actually confessing him. So we believe in him and we acknowledge him. Two things. That is far superior than our righteousness that is of the law. So even if we are not walking perfectly, walking out the law perfectly to the T, physically, we have the righteousness which is in Yahusha Hamashiach. We believe in him, we confess in him, then we are better than the person who is just walking out the law perfectly without belief and without confessing Yahusha. That is why in Galatians, in Romans 2, he told us that the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, they become a law unto themselves. Yes, they don't have to do the exact law. But because their hearts are transformed in the righteousness, they do the best with what they do, and they believe in Yahusha, they confess him, they walk out and seek him and try to walk after him. That is the righteousness that is important. Verse 10. That I may know him. This is the righteousness that is important. Continue. And the power of his resurrection. This is the righteousness that is important. And the fellowship of his suffering. Willing to partake of his sufferings. Continue. Being made conformable unto his death. So when a Gentile comes and is like that, and I am there now as an Israelite with my little um, self, not willing to know him, not willing, striving to know the power of his resurrection, not willing to partake of the fellowship of his sufferings, not willing to be made conformable unto his death, and a Gentile comes and is willing to do those things. Where do I think I am going? You think because I'm an Israelite, the most high, the most has no respect of persons. Yes? Verse 11. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. That is my task. Can I attain unto the resurrection of the dead? What do I need to do? What do I have to do? What must I do at all costs? Hmm? So, let's go to verse 18. Of the same Philippians. So many of us are enemies of the stake because we reject Hamashiach. Verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the stake of Hamashiach whose end is destruction, whose Zalua allure is, is their, their belly, belly and whose splendor is in their shame. Who mind, mind earthly, earthly things. things. Remember at the start we said it is walking out the spirit of it that makes us through, through faith that makes us successful believers. These believers now, it says their alua is their belly. So for those people, we see in the end time a lot of people who are talking about fleeing out of Babylon, etc., setting up some communities where they're making money and they make money here and they set up another community and another community, it now starts to look like a business and the communities they're setting up are replicas of Babylon. We see in Christianity, they're setting up their churches from everything. Their alua is their belly and they mind earthly things. When we do this, it says we are enemies of the stake of Hamashiach. Because, verse 20, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Master, Yahusha HaMashiach, mm -hmm. who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his exalted body, according to the working, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Brethren, it's all about Yahusha HaMashiach. Our conversation is in heaven, not minding earthly things. Spiritual Things we mind. So we look for the Savior who, will, who shall change our vile body. That it may be fashioned like unto his splendid body. Alright? So that is what we await. So, 
Oh, 135. Okay. So we're going to look at another thing before we leave. We're going to look at... We're looking at faith. We're going to look at fearfulness. Or fearful versus faithful. Timid versus bold. Let me tell you something, people. When we are in this walk, we have to be bold. True believers are bold. We are not shy. We are not timid. When we are led by the Ruach, a boldness will come upon us. Shyness has no place in a true believer who is led by the Ruach. Fearful. The meaning of fearful is the G1169 is delos. It means timid. No, it comes from dios, which means dread. Timid. That is by implication faithless. When we have no faith, we will be timid. We will dread. All right? This is like shyness. So boldness, faithful, is the opposite of fearful. Let's look at them. I think we looked at both. We're going to look at both. Acts 4.13, fearful versus faithful. We must fall under the, the banner of faithful. Acts 4, verse 13. Read it, please. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Yahusha. So you and I, if we have been with Yahusha, people must, must see it. Yeah? Because we are going to show boldness because the Ruach in us is going to make us stand up bold and speak now i've always told people about how shy i was and now and how when i started to do all of these video things how i used to tremble etc but over time the ruach has led me to a boldness to do this no matter how many people are listening or watching or i don't care this has to come from all of us. The shyness has no part to do with a New Testament believer. Let's go to verse 31 of that Acts 4. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, and they speak the word of Alua with, with boldness. With shyness. With boldness. With timidness. With boldness. Ah. When you're filled with the Ruach, you will speak the word of Alua with boldness. Ephesians 3, verse 12. Yes? In whom we have boldness. No, 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 no. 11, sorry. 11. According to the eternal <laughs> purpose, which he purposed in Hamashiach, Yahusha, our master. In, in whom we, we have boldness, boldness and access with confidence by, by the, the faith, faith of him. him. So this faith that we have in Hamashiach is supposed to make us bold. So, reading the scriptures without the faith of Hamashiach, we are going to be timid. We have to have the faith of him, which is the faith in him, is Ruach in us, will embolden us to speak the word without fear. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So in walking as Hamashiach walked, that is how his Ruach will be in us. 
and we will have boldness in the day of judgment. So we don't even need the boldness only now. We need the boldness in the day of judgment to be able to stand up as having borne witness unto Hamashiach. So, fear versus faith. Fear versus faith. Matthew 8, 23 to 26. Fear versus faith. Yeah, this is, this is where it comes in, Amakai. And yeah. when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith. You see that? Ye of little faith. If you have little faith, you will be fearful. Continue. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. All right. Why are ye fearful? Why are ye timid, O ye of little faith? Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Go ahead. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. All right. So, this requires faith. Let your conversation be without covetousness. You have to believe and trust in the Most High as a provider, or else you'll be coveting other people. Be content with such things as you have, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. This is faith. He says, he will never leave me nor forsake me, so I believe in his provision. Full stop. Verse 6. So that we may boldly say, Yahuwah is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. That is the faith that we need to have. This is faith. Yahuwah is our helper. And this faith overcomes the fear. I do not fear what man can do unto me. Now this is the faith that we need to have in the end. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And, and they, they loved, loved not, not their, their lives unto, unto the, the death. death. This is the faith that we need to have in the end time. Not loving our lives unto the death. These are for people who face sickness. Yes? Let me tell you something, people. Many of us face sickness. What are we going to do? We as believers, we know about pharmacia. We know about the pharmaceutical industry, the medical industry, how they are poisoning the medicines. They are actually putting all sorts of... Oh, I forget what's going on YouTube. Anyway, I don't, I don't know what to say. Anyway, <laughs> we know what they are doing. And um, what are we going to do? Are we going to continue to follow their way? Or are we going to not love our lives unto the death and believe in the Most High to save us? For me, the Most High will have to let me down. He will have to let me down and make me ashamed. And people will have to say, look at him, he believed in the Most High. And look at what happened to him. This is what has to happen to me. Yes? Sickness is one thing. And the sister that I was talking about, sickness was one of the things. 
if you are listening, must not love our lives unto the death. We have to be willing to make our bodies a living sacrifice. We have to be sick and be willing to struggle through it, knowing that you can take one pill and you're better in an instant. And struggle for weeks, months to get it better without their tablet. That is emunah. That is faith. We cannot love our lives unto the death. And here's the reason why. Here is the problem now when we are lacking in faith. Look at the problem that we have now. Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fearful. Stop. But the who? The fearful. Say it again. But the fearful. Continue. And unbelieving. Oh yes, the unbelievers, yes. And the abominable. And murderers. And whoremongers. And sorcerers. Oh, those who take the medications that the pharmaceuticals give us. Oh, continue. And idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. You see, this is a danger now of being fearful, of being timid. If the Messiah comes back and we are here timid, what do you think? This is us, the second death. If we cannot stand boldly in his Ruach, then we are going to be timid. Yes? If we are fearful of sickness and fearful of death and allow ourselves to fall to the sorcerers, those Doctors and their system that is going to inject us and put all sorts of abominations into us, polluting our temples, which are our bodies, which are the temples of the Most High. <laughs> Look what we have to face. I tell you, I prefer to, 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 to take this risk. I prefer to take this risk of hoping on the Most High, trusting on the Most High to give me a cure. Praying for me, people praying for me, whatever, taking herbs, rather than to fall to this. Whomever is listening to this, who needs to hear this? Do not, because of the fear of your life, you go and offer yourself upon their altars. Anyway. The call, we must be perfect. You see, we have no room for imperfection. Matthew 5, 48. There is no room for imperfection, especially in these last days. The most I have shown me some dreams and shown me some things to show me that time is running out. Time is running out. These are the last days. We have to make it right. This is why these, we get messages like these that are encouraging us, hastening us, do this. You have to do it now. Move, move, move. Because the time is running out. I got some dreams this week. Urgency. Urgency. Things are coming. I, won't, I have not even spoken to most people about them. All right, so where were we again? Where, what did I say again? Matthew 5, 48, yes. Matthew. I am, I'm, this thing is just in my mind. Matthew 5, 48. Go ahead. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. This is what the Moses is telling us now at this time. We have to be perfect. 1 Peter 1, 14 to 16. This is the time for it. A time for perfection. First Peter 1, 14 to 16. As obedient children, mm -hmm. not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Yes. But as he which hath called you is set apart, so you be set apart in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, or be ye set apart, for I am set apart. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect. Ephesians 4, 13. 
time for perfection, people. It's a time for perfection. Go ahead. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of Elua unto a perfect man, mm -hmm. unto the measure of the stature. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Again, I heard start from verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, mm -hmm. for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body mm -hmm. of Hamashiach, till we all come in, in the, the unity, unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of Elua unto, unto a, a perfect, perfect man, man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Hamashiach. This is our aim. To come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahusha. This is perfection. This is where our target is. This is where we must be. James 2.22 This is where we are headed. We should be headed. Go ahead. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. By works was faith made perfect. So if by our works, our faith is made perfect. We will attain unto a perfect man, which is our aim. Now, for me as a teacher, it is my task to not only perfect my faith, but also to perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Wherever we are as leaders... Our task is to perfect what is lacking in each of you, your faith. If I fail to do so, then it is either that I did not try, or I did not try hard enough, or is that it was rejected, or it was accepted. But my task is to perfect what is lacking in our faith. So my task at all times is to see what is lacking in the assembly and to provide for it. To see what is lacking with other people because I don't only associate with people in the assembly. People outside communicate with me, tell me what is lacking. I see what is lacking. I also have to try to perfect what is in them because I have to say the most I has given them um, unto me in order to lead them out of wherever they are into the way that he wants them to go. And I also have to know what happens and see what happens to other believers and non-believers on the outside to see what is lacking in their faith. So as teachers, the Apostle Shaul, 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. That which is lacking, that is what we are called to do. You have people leading, you have to try to perfect that which is lacking in their faith. Okay? So, faith without works is dead, but faith without the word is also dead. The word with, without faith, and I'm not speaking about how much the word, the written word without faith is also dead. So faith is needed in every single aspect of our lives to perfect us. We cannot walk in righteousness. As it says in 2 Timothy 3, I think 15 to 16, the scriptures are able to bring us unto salvation through the faith which is in Hamashiach. If we utilize the emunah that is in Hamashiach, then the scriptures are able to bring us unto salvation. Without emunah, and emona is the thing that is missing in this social media age. The people on social media just there putting scriptures and uh, as you have some people share things to, with me. And the other day, um, someone shared something with me and I look at it. I'm very skeptical about all that is shared. 
Because I know what I'm speaking is what I know. That there are people out there that's knowledge. That's crave knowledge, knowledge without any MNR. And the thing that they posted, it, 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 I could see that this looks like somebody made up this. So I asked the person where did it come from. And the person told me that they didn't know. Started investigating and found out that there was no known author of the thing. And this is what happens when you move, when, 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 you, when, you, when you accept things from people in which there is no faith. People in this world are in groups, social media groups, online groups, everything. They go there just to find a place to relay their, um, what you call it, their religious head. The faith that is needed is not there. So I go in religion, go in this group. Oh, these people are talking some truth and stay in the truth. We saw that with our group. We saw that with our group when we were on YouTube, having our YouTube, we had our meeting, our group that had our regular meeting. Remember, when we were ready to come to South Africa, that is when people started, I don't think that's such and such, and I don't believe such and such. Everybody was with us, firing. But when the time required faith, everybody started, not everybody, but the majority the numbers start to dwindle. That person start to that. And when I talk to that person, well, I, just, I need a little more this and I need this and I that and I that. Faith. This is what is important. If you do not have faith enough to make a move that is mad crazy, that affects you, affects your family, affects everything around you, then you're going to be in problems. Because that is what the Most High always calls. He always calls us to give up things. He always calls us to make sacrifices. He never calls us in a comfort zone. Never. Ever, ever, ever. So MNR, faith is what is 100% necessary for us to be in righteousness. That is why it's called righteousness through faith. It's believing the hard thing and taking action on the hard thing that makes us righteous. Anything, anyone with anything to say before we go? It's getting dark. We didn't get to go to Romans um, 10 and 9. Oh, we didn't. And 14 and 15. Oh, yes. Romans 10 and 9. 10 and 9. All right, if you're not seeing me on the screen, right now it's dark where we are. Romans 10 and 9. Go ahead. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the master Yahusha, mm -hmm. and shalt believe in thine heart that Alua hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All right. So this is what, can you explain what Shaul is saying here? Yeah, I think you heard, yes. So we see um, with the word that confession is important because earlier we were reading in Matthew about confessing before men. Yes. That the Most High or Yahusha will confess him, confess us before Yahuwah. And likewise, on the other hand, with denying him, that he would deny us before the Father. Mm -hmm. And we see here the importance of confession, that if we confess the Master Yahusha with our mouth and in our heart, then we will be saved. Mm -hmm. But if we read down further, we're going to see the importance of faith and other aspects of the word here. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to 14 and 15, mm -hmm. how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Mm -hmm. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the good news of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Mm -hmm. So that belief isn't just something you <laughs> receive in your heart, but it comes 
with an action, as we saw in James chapter 2 talking about faith without works being dead, mm -hmm. and that even the devils or the demons believe. Mm -hmm. So that faith has to urge us to do something. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just being religious mm -hmm. and like the demons with this faith that doesn't cause any works to come with it. Yay. Good. So which other one you said we didn't do? That was it. That was oh, that was, that was it. Yeah. All right. All right. So anything else we missed? Wow, I'm invisible. <laughs> Let me see if I can shine some light on myself. Eh? It's, it's, we are almost done anyway. <laughs> hey, at least you can see a little bit of me. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Anyone with anything else before we go? All right. Thank you all for listening. And if you are watching, if you're watching on YouTube, this is what it looks like when you flee out of the midst of Babylon. No, <laughs> no electric city. No electricity from the government yeah this is what it is like all right all right so thank you all for listening and or watching and until next time i love you all and shalom shalom